Hi, this is Steve Michelotti from the Azure Government Engineering Team. I'm joined today by Saka, my colleague from the Azure Gov Engineering Team, and we're going to be talking about the Azure Government Developer and Technical Community. So, welcome, Saka. Hi, Steve. I thought we could start out by uh, just talk to us a little bit about what the overall goals we have are for the Azure Government Developer and Technical Community. You know, why is this important? Yeah, of course. Uh, well, as Microsoft has changed over the years. Developer community has always been a constant for us. And for the government as well, we also need to make sure developers feed at home, that they can contribute, make the product better, help us make sure that we're building the right thing, and can also contribute, give back to others, and help others when they need. Cool. All right, so let's start out at the most kind of square one, most basic level. Um, how can developers stay informed about uh, what services are available in Azure government, how to use services, what's going on in Azure government? Um, what can we do there? Yeah, the very basic thing to get started with is go through our developer documents. Okay. So you can see those by a simple, we've made very simple links for everything, so aka MS Azure Gov Docs. You'll actually see this documentation. And we've done a lot of investments here to make sure you guys can get started up and running with Azure Government pretty quickly and easily. Azure already has a very good set of documentation that outlines how to develop for Azure. And for Azure for Government, there's a few quirks here and there you need to be aware of where our do documentation actually outlines a lot of this. So you can get started very easily with a developer guide that outlines here are all the resources that are available for you as well as things like what are the different endpoints that I need to use, because those are different for Azure government for compliance and security reasons. One of the other things we've done is all the tools that you know and love, like PowerShell, CLI, Visual Studio, we've done a lot of documentation around how to make that easier for you. We've even gone as far as for Visual Studio, we've made an extension and makes it easier for you as a one-click experience for you to connect to Azure government. Okay, so if we just think about the documentation in general, what I hear you saying is, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel and redocument all of Azure, since that's obviously a huge platform as it is. What we're trying to document is, hey, if there's a distinction where there's one little thing you have to do differently for Azure Gov, we'll put that in our docs. Once you're connected to Azure Gov, it's just Azure. And so you can still, all the regular Azure documentation is still quite relevant to uh, what a developer is doing. Yeah, of course. We try to make it in a way that's sequential and seamless for you. So we'll actually start out with, the Azure government landscape around why would you care around using this experience, and then outline the differences, and then lead you naturally into, well, what's next? Here's the documentation, whether it's Azure government specific, or here's the generic Azure documentation that you can continue walking through your experience. Awesome. Okay, so I heard you mention sort of an example of that, where you brought up Visual Studio and things we uh, do easier there. So uh, can you elaborate on that? Yeah, so if you look at the documentation for Visual Studio, you'll see that we actually have the very nice extension here that Actually, Steve, you yourself built. <laughs> uh, so, but originally, before this tool was there, you would actually go and have to make some JSON changes, which are not terrible, it's not hard, but why not make it an even easier experience? So after you install this extension, for which we have a link here, you end up with the experience you already know with the added extensions. Uh, with the added environment select over here. So you can actually just click on that, and now very easily you can pick, I want my experience to be tailored or connect to the regular Azure commercial cloud, government, and even to throw in the others, Germany and China. Okay. So in my case, I've picked government, and now I can actually go and sign in with my Azure for, uh, for government account and manage all my resources as I would. So for example, I've already set this one up. And you can see here that in my Saka Corp government account, I have already some virtual machines here that I've set up, and I actually already set up a Kubernetes cluster using the ACS engine. So you can actually go and manage those from here, and I can do all sorts of management operations that you could do in regular Azure. Okay, so we just had a little difference getting connected to Azure government. We made it easy for you. Once you're connected, it's just the Visual Studio tool that you know and love, you use in Azure. And an Azure added bonus here, we can see your Kubernetes cluster set up running in Azure government. Yeah, exactly. Okay, cool, very cool. Now let's say that I'm a developer, I've got up to I've got up and running and I understand how to use the docs. What if I come across a document that I find is like insufficient, or I, maybe I think I found a mistake in that documentation page, or maybe it doesn't quite do the job I want it to do. What what options do I have as a developer at that point? Yeah, and this is where again the community is super important for us. This is not meant to be a 
us to you kind of thing. We also want you to help us make the product better, not just for you, but for others. So if as you're going through this documentation, you find there's a little gotcha we didn't capture, there's a spelling mistake, you know, God forbid, or anything else that you want to improve, you can always actually just go and make edits yourself. So you can go click on this edit documentation here, and that'll take you to the GitHub repo where all this is at. You can make your own changes, submit a PR, We'll get that reviewed and get it in, in the documentation. So you can be part of this documentation, not only consume it, but help make it better for others. Okay, so all the all of Microsoft documentation is GitHub-based. I can go submit a GitHub pull request, and I can, as a member of the community, can co contribute directly to the Azure government documentation. What if I don't want to put all that work in? I just want to let you know a problem you have in your docs, but I don't want to put all the work to, to fix it for you. What can I do that? Yeah, you can also just add a simple question here or a comment. And okay. this can be either, hey, you know, I don't want to go make the whole edit, but I notice you're missing this. Or for others that are, you know, you can feel you feel like you can complement by adding an extra link or a blog post or something you find interesting, you can actually scroll to the bottom as we have as we see someone has done here and say, hey, I actually have seen someone already demo this extension. Here's a video to it. Awesome. Very cool. Okay, so great. So I I've I'm a developer, I'm up and running. I I understand how to get started. I've got the documentation. At this point, how do I make sure I can stay up to date on what's happening with Azure government? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard these days with things changing so fast. And one of the best channels to do that with Azure government is our Azure government blog. So if you go to our Azure government blog, which is AKMS Azure Gov blog, you're going to see a pattern there. Um, you can actually see all the things that are related to Azure government. And this can vary from being very technical focused. So we launched IoT Hub, or IoT Hub is now available in Azure government. Also things about community events, or things like industry-related things, like you know, readings on the importance of elevating the value of the CAO. How can CAOs and, and government agencies make themselves get ahead of the curve in, in, with regards to digital innovation? Awesome. So we basically, all things related to Azure Gov, newsworthy events, or just simple, uh, you even mentioned the community event that's showing up on the blog here, all of that can be seen through our Azure government blog, which you can subscribe to like any other blog. Yeah, of course. And as you said, you know, the, the social piece is also present here. You're going to see that present everywhere, where we're actually also submitting blog posts that include places where we'll be at. So you can see here that the NVIDIA GPU conference will be there. So you can actually just ping us and say, I'm going to be there as well. We can talk and get, get your feedback and help make the product better. Awesome. The other thing we also have here is our Hackfest. Okay. So these are events that we put together to bring people like you that just want to play around either because you're getting started or you already have a project in mind and want to kick the tires or are far along and want have some things you want to go take to the next level, you can attend to this Hackfest and get with others in the community and hack together whatever is in your mind. Okay, so where can I find these Hackfest events? Where do I go to, to see some of that? I guess, well, I can go to the blog and the blog will link me to a registration site or something like that? Yes, correct. Okay. And we even have uh, meetup events that also have that same uh, format. So you can see over here in Eventbrite, that's where we host the Hackfest, and yep. we have invitations for those. And likewise, we also have meetup events. These ones are today focused in DC, but we're looking at expanding those outside of DC, where a community of developers for Azure government and just people interested in technology within government attend and get all sorts of very interesting talks. We've had from Mark Rusinovich talking about blockchain in government to things like big data and how you can get up and running quickly with a Microsoft data science machine. Okay, so we have a series of things. We have the Hackfest, which, as you mentioned, two-day events, first day is training, second day is more hands-on, getting together developers in a community. A lot of times we have about 100 people at those events to these meetup events that happen monthly. And actually, the meetup event, sometimes people see that and they said, oh, well, I'm not in the DC area, you know, I can't do it. But actually, we're starting to live stream those as well. So yeah. like you said, even if you're not in the, the DC area, you can watch it on live stream or even just watch the video afterward, which is, is pretty cool. Not only are they live stream, but they're recorded. So you can, at some other point in the day while you're commuting or while you're biking or exercising, you can watch out those videos and keep up to date on how things are going. Okay, so speaking of videos, so we're talking about different avenues for training on Azure government. We mentioned the Hackfest, we mentioned you know the Meetup, and of course our documentation. What, what are some other training um, resources we have to help you keep up to speed on what's going on with Azure Gov? Yeah, I guess a little bit of a meta plug here. The videos, such as this one, <laughs> yes. there's a series of videos that we have. <laughs> so hopefully you're watching this one and you'll get to see others where are in AKAMS, Azure Gov video, and you'll see all the other videos that we're producing around networking, security, industry, everything. 
Um, so these are also other avenues that you can plug in. And likewise, you'll see, as everything else, you can not only watch them, but provide your comments and your feedback and rate them. Right. So you may have come to this video as a following a blog post or a web search. Um, but if not, you can go to this entire library and see other videos like this one. Um, okay. So we've got various training events. I'm getting up to uh, getting up and running with my Azure Gov. How about getting up and Getting up and running in general, code samples, that sort of thing. How do I know, you know, I've got my C sharp constructor set up correctly for storage or whatever the case may be? Where can I go to get more code level detailed information? So that's where GitHub comes in. So we have a KMS, Azure Gov samples, where you land in this pre made search, which is looking for samples or repositories that, that are tagged Azure government. So today we have three, we're growing this very quickly. But the first one that you see over there is your own, Steve, a application for that demonstrates not only how to build, build cool stuff with uh, many different services in Azure government, but also do that in a way that's tailored for government around an intelligent mission that uses cognitive services to identify the, known, the usual suspects and objects that are, you would be interesting to you in you know, a TSA kind of scenario. Okay, so I can come to these samples, I can see examples of something as trivial as this is the one line of C-sharp I need to see different for my constructor, or here's a whole application and I can deploy it to my own subscription and I can get things um, you know, just looking at this tag. In fact, as a regular member of the developer community, there's nothing stopping me from putting up my own GitHub repository, even though I don't necessarily work for Microsoft, and saying, here, tag it with the Azure government tag. You can contribute to the developer community, even if you don't work for Microsoft. Yeah, of course. Uh, again, community constant theme in this conversation and in our overall goals, you'll see this everywhere. So you'll see our samples have the mechanisms for you to branch out, make your own changes. If you see this is interesting, we want to change it a little bit, you can go ahead and fork that and make your own changes and then publish that again with the tags so that others can benefit. All right, so what if I just have read the documentation, I've seen the code samples, but I'm still stuck on some technical question. Um, where can I go for help for these technical questions? Yeah, I mean, as I said, you can use issues if you're if they're tied to a specific GitHub sample. But as you said, there's also scenarios where either I forked away from this and started creating my own, or I'm just doing something out there that's different. That's where we leverage the power of Stack Overflow and the community around it. And this is where the community also is really important because not only do they ask questions, you see that as people become more uh, involved, they start answering questions themselves. So you not only get the benefit of us monitoring that, but others in the community share their learnings, their experiences, and help you out. So as long as I go to Stack Overflow and make sure I tag the question with Azure government, I can have pretty good confidence that I'm going to get an answer to that because we're actually paying attention to that tag. We didn't just throw it up there and we're ignoring it. We have multiple people on our team monitoring that tag to answer questions. Yeah, of course, and, and this is twofold as well. As you find things that are useful or questions that relate to what you're looking for in Stack Overflow, vote them up. Yep. They'll help us build the ammunition and understand what do we want to prioritize. So if we see that even though there's a Stack Overflow answer for something, we see a lot of people stumbling across that particular pain point, we'll go and make it better for you. Yeah, we've actually seen instances where people send us a question over email, and we said, hmm, why don't you ask me this question on Stack Overflow, and I'll answer it there, because then everyone in the community benefits, and it's not just one person answering one person. It, it's you, That answer is out in the open for everyone to benefit from. Yeah, of course, and, and you know, personally, I'm a very, uh, I'm a victim of gamification. Stack Overflow has this point system, so trust me, once you get in it, it starts getting you hooked on asking questions, contributing, making edits, all that goodness around community. Right. Another common theme that I like to observe in this is that we are not reinventing the wheel here. Stack Overflow, that is the place to go for developers to ask questions, Azure Gov or not. GitHub, that is the open source location for developers to look for code, Azure Gov or not. So we are you know, in the places where developers are, and we want developers to stick with things they know and love and are already familiar with. Yeah, and that also has the added value of being very natural for you to go outside the boundaries of Azure Gov. So if you're asking something that's Azure Gov, but also ties into Node, for example, yep. you'll ask your question and tag it to both. So you can also tap into the Node community, which can help you there as well. Same thing happens for GitHub and for all the other resources that tie in very naturally to the broader developer ecosystem and are not just isolated to Azure Gov. Yeah, I mean, with Microsoft being the number one community, uh, contributor to GitHub now, I mean, that fits in pretty naturally with what we do anyway. So how does uh, one give feedback to the Azure Gov team? I mean, we, we talked about giving feedback on, I want to give feedback on this one documentation page or a GitHub sample, but what if I need to provide the Azure government team more broad feedback about, maybe it's something like, hey, I really need this service right here in Azure Gov and you guys don't have it, or whatever the case may be. 
Where does someone go to give feedback to our team? Yeah, of course. So we have our official feedback form, AKMS, Azure Gov Feedback. Okay. And along the similar lines, we try to make it really easy for everyone. And that'll line you in a place like this one, which is part of the broader Azure feedback system. So again, it's not Azure Gov specific. We do have a form that's for Azure government, but it ties along with the rest of the product teams. So you can see here, people have actually started asking for features that are not necessarily available yet in Azure government. And what we do our best here is not only to provide you with ETAs or guidance around when is this coming, but also give you possible workarounds or how to deal with those limitations. So this feedback channel is a place where people can go and give feedback and sort of almost advise our team on what's important. Yeah, it helps us, again, figure out what's important. So if we see that there's an item with a lot of people interested in it, a lot of votes, that makes it easier for us to prioritize it and make the decision to actually go get it, to okay. make it available, whether it's a service that's not there or just a brand new feature that we need to make available for our government community. And how do we kind of figure out uh, who our advisors are and you know, if you want to be a part of giving us more in-depth feedback on that kind of thing? Yeah, so we have a program called Azure Government Advisors. That's the next level up from this. So if you think about this forum, this is more of a one-off, hey, you know, I was poking around and I noticed this feedback is missing. Well, I would like to see this made better, but it's a one-off. With advisors, you're actually closer with us. You're working with us much earlier as we make very early decisions and we actually engage with you on an ongoing basis where we are deeply aware of your scenarios, what your goals are, and you are also in line with us with regards to what are we thinking, what are our next steps, and you get to influence those very early in the process. Okay, so if I am someone that thinks I would be a good member of the Azure Gov Advisors, how do I go about kind of raising my hand for that job? Yeah, I'll post the email at the end, and we have an email you can reach out to and say, hey, I feel like I'd be a great candidate for advisors. We'd love to work with you guys we can actually start the conversation and get you on board in the program. All right, so you, you mentioned about posting some links and you've set a few links here as we've been going through. So if you wanna um, kind of put some of those links uh, back up on the screen here, because people may have missed them the first time around, let's just sh show those real quick. Yeah, hopefully they're easy to memorize going forward because it's pretty much AKMS, Azure Gov, and then, and then the, the thing we talked about. So you'll see docs, blog, meetup. Uh, video, stack overflow samples. And for advisors in particular, or if you just want to have a very informal conversation with us, you can reach out to us via the Azure Gov feedback at Microsoft.com alias. Awesome. So we've got a lot going on right now with Azure government with respect to the developer and technical community. There's many different ways for people to get involved. We, we want people to get involved. And uh, I think really exciting time for Azure government. Yeah, of course, we'd love to talk to you guys, whatever mechanism or means it is. We want to make sure we're building the right thing for the right people. So the only way we can do that is by constantly talking to you guys, getting feedback from you guys. Okay, great. All right, this has been Steve Michelotti, along with my colleague Saka, talking about Azure government, developer, and technical community. Uh, thanks for watching.